In serving more than a third of the Fortune 500 organizations as clients, I've never worked with an organization whose senior executive team did not have concern for the social skills of their employees. How do I know? Well, several clues. First, consulting sessions with many professionals include requests for help from their senior executive supervisor on their social interactions because the individual they were sending for coaching has received unfavorable comments on their 360 reviews from their support team. Another clue, most all of the client organizations offer intern programs developed to teach social skills to their new hires, including topics on interacting with those executive customers. And another clue, client organizations terminate employment, even at the senior executive level, for lack of such social skills. People are at their best with those random acts of kindness to strangers but coworkers and family members don't fare so well. The reasons vary. We take them for granted. Familiarity breeds irritability sometimes. Whatever the cause, rudeness can ruin both family and work relationships with close colleagues and customers. Otherwise, competent business leaders are disliked and dissed by their staff and their peers when they fail to understand that manners do matter. The revival of respect and kindness could absolutely revolutionize employee engagement. Leaders communicate discourtesy and a lack of respect in sympathy of that call. Another way, keeping a caller waiting on hold for an extended period, and that is 20 seconds or more, without any kind of explanation. Fidgeting with your gadgets while other people are trying to talk to you. Arriving late to meetings and keeping everybody else in the room waiting. That's a power play sometimes. Interrupting people to change the topic or interject your own comment in the middle of another discussion. Working on other projects during a meeting, causing everybody else to have to go back and repeat things to you. Another clue, not speaking to other people when you're walking into a room. Failing to return a greeting when somebody speaks to you as you walk down the hall. Just keeping head down. Sulking or withdrawing when you're in a bad mood. Speaking in a harsh tone when you're upset, cutting people off using sarcasm or other put-down humor that's obviously meant to embarrass other people on sensitive issues, dressing somebody down in front of other people so as to embarrass or humiliate them. Another clue, speaking to other people but not all those others that are in the same group, excluding others from a group during a break or lunch simply just because you feel superior to them in some social or intellectually way, intellectual way. Failing to express appreciation when other people do work for you. Not exchanging pleasantries, just things like good morning, goodbye, or asking how someone feels after they've been out on sick leave or just absent for a day or two. The opposite of these actions, of course, are the small kindnesses that communicate respect for others, things that engage their hearts and ultimately increase your own influence when you have an important message or a belief or a, a value to share. Manners matter a great deal to leaders who last. Mm -hmm.